Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette here with another episode of Painting Live in your PJs with Manette. Welcome this morning to a little bit of creative chaos. I was going through some of my boxes of collage materials and I have a huge stack of things here that I want to play with an exploration of our prompts this morning. But first I want to just say hello and welcome. We have so many new subscribers over the last month and I am incredibly grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you for being here and I'm also so grateful to those of you. We're celebrating a year of painting in your PJs and uh, I'm super excited about my own consistency, which will lend itself to our theme today, and to how many of you have played with me this whole year on the journal. So welcome to each of you. And I was digging through my <clears throat> boxes of collage materials this morning, and I wanted to show you these two sacred circle designs. These are two of the designs that are included in our creative self-reflection kit. We have 36 of these gorgeous designs created by my son Connor that are perfect for coloring. Notice how simple the designs are. Many of them are open like this. They don't need to take days and days to color. We want you to enjoy the mindful, relaxing experience of coloring. So I wanna encourage you to uh, check out our creative self-care kit. The link to that kit is below the video in the description of the video and then this is one of the Zendala classes or the Tangled Sacred Circles as I like to call them. There are three hours of classes, there, well four hours, there's an introduction to Zentangle if it's new to you and then there's three of these gorgeous designs where I have tangled inside of Connor's patterns. So please do check out that creative self-care bundle that is available for only $29 through the end of the year. Uh, my hubby and I worked hard to put that bundle together and we're really proud of it. All right, get all my technology going on the right direction here. Hey, good morning, good morning. Happy to be here with everybody. Thank you, Kim. Um, Connor's designs are just so lovely and the being able to add tangle patterns and color to them is something that makes me so happy. Good morning, Blanca. Happy to be here with you on a Saturday as well. Really loving being here again a little more frequently this month. And uh, Sylvia, good morning. Judy, good morning. And Judy, again, thank you for that gorgeous, gorgeous journal. And I'm hoping you got my thank you note that I sent you by email. And uh, it was really fun to share it on the video yesterday. So thank you for that beautiful handmade journal. I'm thinking that might be the, the journal that I work in go in January. We'll see. It's so pretty. I'm kind of afraid to work in it, Judy. All right, take a sip of my coffee. So I'm gonna be taking off tomorrow, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and I will be back on the Tuesday morning after Christmas. And I decided I wanted to do two prompts today to kind of move myself along through my 21 days of prompts. I do wanna get this project finished by the end of the year. I have all kinds of things floating around on my desk. It looks a little bit like creative chaos at the moment. And um, I'm not 100% where I'm going with all of this, but what I love about this process is that I'll figure it out as we go along. So this is yesterday's spread from Do, <laughs> Do You Love Yourself Warts and All? It ended up being a super fun spread. And then this morning I found in my stash this uh, page of words. And I'm kind of leaning towards beautiful. I knew that I wanted a, a word on this heart, but I wasn't sure what that word was gonna be. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It could just be love on there as well. So I'm looking for that word that's just gonna remind me what that spread was about, or maybe even true love. 
So periodically, I need to remember to go through my boxes of collage materials, handmade and magazines. There was so much fun stuff in there. As you can see, I pulled out a giant pile this morning of goodies. And I love coming down here in the mornings after having walked away from what I created the day before, you know, and there's always those moments when maybe I created something that I didn't love as much. And then I come down and I see it with fresh eyes in the morning and seeing it with those fresh eyes. I always find more to like about it, or I find that next step of what I can add so that I will like it better. And this just needed those some little words to, to finish up our little self love spread from yesterday. And as I was going through my stash, this was a spread from a few days ago that was focused on creating that sacred space in my mind's eye, that imaginative place. And I knew that I wanted a bird on this. And as I was going through my stash, I found a page of birds. And I really like this sweet little bird on the green tapping down to the water. And I love these. There's some creepy bats on the other side. But I love these sort of old-fashioned antique looking images so when I find these things it's important to just pause and, and take a minute to just feel like you're in completion with your projects right you know I, I've been looking at this as I'm doing my flip through of the journal to see what feels unfinished and as I'm doing this fussy cutting, I'll share today's two prompts. So I'm going to share prompts for days 16 and 17 and do a spread for each. I'm going to work with mostly collage this morning. We'll see if we get to some paint as well. And in kind of a, a maybe funky way, I think these two prompts go together nicely. So the first prompt that kind of grabbed my eye, and I'm pulling all these prompts from our 118 self-reflection prompts. Okay, so that little birdie, I'm looking to see if I have just a plain circle, even a tag might work. Like I really want the bird on there, but he's not going to show against the, the dark. Okay, that feels a little bit better. So now I know where I'm going. I'm like, I can work on that and get that spread finished up. So the first prompt was, what are the rituals and routines that bring you comfort? Rituals and routines that bring you comfort. As we look ahead to the new year, I think that's always a great thing to consider is what rituals do you have in place that are nourishing and supporting you? What rituals and routines are habits that perhaps are not supporting you? And I have this little envelope with all these little tiny images cut out from something. And I felt inspired to... So looking at the stars would be a fun ritual to add. I love those little leafy bits. That's exactly what I was looking for. So one of the rituals and routines that supports me and brings me comfort is reading. There's another one that represents reading. I love those pretty stamps as well. Connecting with others. But I was thinking more about rituals and routines that support me personally. I have a very solid morning routine. And one of the things that is on my list to, those are fun words, on my list for next year is to have a better evening routine. Turn off the television earlier, <clears throat> spend a little more time you know, thinking about bedtime and preparing for sleep. Maybe doing some stretching before bed would feel good. And then the other 
prompt was, do you consider yourself extroverted or introverted? Extroverted or introverted? And this image surfaced again that's been floating around and it's a man with his arms raised and the little sign up here says, let the journey begin. And this one, I think, actually, it may be more related to the rituals and routine. So what I'm sensing this morning is I'm going to do like a mini <clears throat> little vision board here that's all about me. I was flipping through some pages from a, a Judy Moody book that I have cut up for collage. It's a really fun one to collage with. And there was a whole chapter on where she creates a me collage, as she calls it, for a school project. And I was also really drawn to this image of this climber here uh, with the people gazing up at him because this may be his comfort zone, but it's certainly not mine. And I've talked on this series before, I think, probably, and certainly in a lot of my other programs because my husband and I have this conversation frequently. In fact, we've been having it again recently about like growth doesn't happen in our comfort zone, right? Growth happens, oh, look at that. There's the word comfort. How perfect is that? So growth doesn't happen in our comfort zone. It actually happens when we are willing to get uncomfortable, whether that's working out a little harder at the gym, going for a longer walk, whether it's, you know, turning off the television, whether it's making different choices about how you're feeding yourself. And then how does this all tie to that extroverted or introverted concept and ideas? Well, I think it's all related because different routines nourish us differently depending on whether or not we're extroverted or introverted. And then I also just pulled a bunch of fun collage. We went to our favorite coffee shop recently and these were the papers that they were putting into their uh, putting their pastries into they have amazing pastries they're all in French all these pictures of the Eiffel Tower and I was so excited and told her I was going to be taking these home to use in collage fodder um, travel is something that I really like and I love being at home. So you might think that I am super, super extroverted and I can be super, super extroverted, but I'm also very introverted. So I love teaching. I'm very comfortable in the front of the room. I have a lot of control over the environment when I'm the, the one teaching. I'm also very comfortable meeting new people, but I'm not very good at sort of that typical chit chat or, you know, I am not the center of attention or the life of the party. And I need a lot of time to recuperate after spending time with people, especially in person. And people often think that introversion has to do, and I love this heart and brain in concert together, this sweetest little embroidered piece here showing that connection between caring for the heart and the brain. Um, I don't know if this one's going to fit for today, but I love there's they're roasting marshmallows. This one also felt very much like that introverted you know, solace, self-care, quiet. And what I have discovered is that I'm happy being around people and I need a lot of time to recover. So um, people think that introversion is the same as being shy. It's not. And I highly recommend Susan Cain's TEDx talk or, or her book all about, called Quiet, all about how hard it is for introverts to succeed and thrive in a world, especially in the culture in the United States, that's really designed for extroverts. I mean, if you think all the way back to being a kid in school, that extroverts are rewarded for raising their hands, being comfortable, speaking out. I also found in my stash these two 
um, affirmation cards from a deck that I had bought somewhere. When I accept myself as I am, I am better able to grow into who I am made to be. I really love this when I start. This is like what we talked about yesterday about rather than going all the way to self-love, we have to go to self-acceptance first. And so I'm thinking this is going to get cut into a circle and probably tipped into this spread. So it was fun just going through boxes and... Uh, finding different things to use. So if you haven't been through your own collage boxes in a while, I recommend doing that. And it made me think about how is that a ritual of its own? Like I'm not someone that spends a lot of time flipping back through my journals. Uh, over time, I tend to, to put them away and just um, not think about them or maybe every once in a while pull them out. All right, so now I have bits and pieces of all kinds of things. I think I'll start on these painty circles that we've got here. And I'm just going to start laying some things out. So as someone, so the difference, the true difference between extroversion and introversion, let me finish what I was starting to say. I'm distracting myself with art is... Um, So extroverted people feel revived and energetic when they spend time with others. Introverted people feel drained and often tired after spending time with others, especially large groups. So most of us are really good one-on-one. -on -one. Like I have a, a dear friend who is such like a classic stereotypical extrovert like her favorite place to be is out and about with groups of friends and she's always organizing outings and events and experiences and for me her very busy life of being out and about so much is exhausting right it feels really exhausting um I'm loving, I'm feeling the, feeling like maybe some fun, all kinds of little tags this morning with all these different little pieces that are floating around. So we're going to see where we're going to go. So one of the reasons I love art making and reading and writing so much is because I regenerate by being home alone. The older that I've gotten, and my mother is very much an extrovert, extrovert, and so, you know, there were always parties and events and things happening. Very much like my friend, she was always organizing all kinds of things. I love this couple. Like this feels like comfort, right? Sitting with my hubby, looking up at the stars. And so when you start to think about rituals and routines, there's always all kinds of conversations about what we should do, what we ought to do. I'm feeling like this guy is really going to be a, a centerpiece. Like he feels like the extroverted part of me let the journey begin ready to go explore try new things and this cutie pie repre represents the introverted part of me that's happy to be home alone with my hubby reading a book watching tv and so I have to manage the energy of both of those and I want to create rituals and routines that support both of those but I also don't want to get trapped in that comfort zone because it's very easy to just stay home. I pulled out this pair. I don't know why it felt like maybe representative of the ritual and routine of nourishing my body with healthy food and beverages. And also I love pears. So I might do something with that. And I'm thinking what I'm gonna start. I also like these kind of little peekaboo pieces. I don't know. As you can see, I just gathered stuff. And I'm going to start by just getting some collage paper down on the surface and we will build up from there. So I have a few bits and pieces, book pages. 
And I'm just starting with a glue stick. If I decide to add paint, I will come back and add some matte medium over the top of all of this. But let's just get some things down here. So my personal ritual and routine in the morning usually involves, I either go straight to creative, like right now I have this huge elephant painting that I'm working on and I'm excited and eager to work on it and I, I get a little obsessive sometimes about paintings and then I neglect the other part of my rituals that I know nourish and support me. So when things are right aligned for me, I like to take time to do a little nonfiction reading in the morning, usually something related to personal growth or to business, and then do some journaling and then I go to the creative. And a lot of times my journaling becomes uh, visual and written. I'm adding marks or sketches. I love starting a page with just these layers of abstract collage. Again, like we've been talking about this week, it's the layers that start to really add meaning and depth to our pages, even if by the, the end of the practice or the session, I don't see any of this. I know that it's there. It adds texture to the pages. And of course, my mornings always include coffee, and a glass of water, some journaling. I might listen to some meditation music while I'm journaling. And then, okay, this guy is gonna need, I think, a tag of his own. And I'm gonna have to find a bigger tag or piece of paper to put him on or maybe not. Let's see if we can trim him up a little bit. And then I have this series that I do in the morning that I love and then usually the next thing on the list depending on my schedule is exercise. Either going for a walk or Brad and I'll go to the gym. And I feel really good about my morning routine. Like it feels nourishing and supportive. The days when I get grumpy or out of sorts or the days when I have too much going on and maybe I wake up at five and I go straight to my computer to get things done, which sometimes happens. Okay, I'm gonna make that fit on this tag and he's gonna get tucked in. And there's this pretty little ribbon floating around here too, perfect. Feels very important to have this aspect of stretching outside of my comfort zone when it comes to routines and rituals, but also sometimes when it comes to this query between extroversion and introversion. So one of the very first, actually the very first coaching certification that I did way back in 2006, I've been a coach forever, was a parent coaching certification. And as part of that certification, I was trained in a personality assessment and through that training, I remember him talking about this idea of introversion and extroversion and that extroverts are very bold and very quick to take action on the environment. Like they're ready to be like this guy to go out and take on the world. 
whereas people who are introverted are just more cautious. It's not that they're not risk takers, but they're more cautious. They have a slower, gentler approach to the process. And I remember seeing this in my own kids. So my son was the one when he was little that we would go to the playground and he would instantly go make friends and gather and connect with all the other kids. And get them organized and, you know, playing games and like he was super comfortable out on the playground meeting new people. Whereas my daughter was the one who would sort of stay by my side and watch until she could find a place where she felt like she could sort of enter in or kind of insert herself. And she might find one person on the playground to go connect with, or she might just stay by my side. And reading Susan Cain's work, Quiet, was so insightful because when I first watched her YouTube talk, I realized that my husband is introverted and shy, right? He's very shy about meeting new people, but once he meets them, he's fine. He much prefers small groups and he gets completely overwhelmed in big groups by noise and energy and light. I'm definitely the more social, you know, I love the having dinner parties and, and people over and I'm always going to be the, or, you know, planning weekends away, I'm always going to be the planner. And once I recognize that, you know, it's, uh, we settled into our rituals and routines together. Okay, I think this is going to want some green paint along the edge of that texture, but I love these little bits of texture. So uh, this is definitely representing the need to step out of my comfort zone. Let's get back to these pieces. I am liking these little bits of this doily here. It's an old one and um, it's kind of coming apart in pieces, but it's going to add some interesting texture to our piece here. And for me, I see my morning routine, my writing and reading is my also my spiritual practice. And when I don't make time for that, I don't feel as good. So I think for me, when it comes to thinking about rituals and routines, what do I want to keep and what do I want to let go of as we step across the threshold into a new year, which is always a, a time of beginnings and endings. And I think especially about that evening space and what do I want to do differently? How can I change that up? In the summer, it's nice if it's not too hot to go for a walk outside and it's really hard to get off the couch after a long day's work and get ourselves out for a walk. So I think about these are all the things that are floating around in my head. Thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with the tag. I do think it needs a little bit of color over here to kind of marry the, the two sides of the tag. But um, it's a topic, like I said, my husband and I talk a lot about. We've even toyed with the idea of writing a book about how important it is to, for us especially, right, to lean into discomfort because it's where the magic happens. And you notice that for the most part, I'm just tearing images. This is that base layer. It doesn't need to be perfect. 
when I first started my very first business 20 years ago, probably more than that now, I started my first business when Maggie was just one. My kids were little and Connor was three. And one of my friends encouraged me to go to our local chamber of commerce to meet people. And so I called the chamber and, you know, talked to their salesperson. And she's like, oh, come to the meeting on Friday morning. And she didn't tell me that I was going to have to stand up and talk about my brand new business that was, you know, still just an idea in the making. And I, and at the time there were about a hundred people in the room and all the chairs were lined up in rows and they would go down the rows and everyone would stand up. And I think you had 30 seconds to talk about your business. It was fast and furious. And I could feel myself getting more and more nervous and my knees were shaking. I think my face probably turned bright red. I can't tell you what I said at the time, but it was so hard to get up that one morning and speak in front of that group, talk about having to get out of my comfort zone. And up to that point, I had been a teacher. I had taught university and high school um, I had a lot of retail experience, but I certainly didn't have any business experience and I'd never started my own business and I had had to do some public speaking for my graduate school work and I would always be so nervous, like sick to my stomach, knees shaking, and I just kept going. I just kept going. Yeah, it was at, in that moment so intimidating, but I kept going and um, it got easier. And I learned that I actually love public speaking. I love being on stage. I still get nervous every time that I am on stage. But I do, I do enjoy it. But I'll never forget like how red my my face turned that day in my nervousness. And um, about five years later, maybe six years later, I actually won small business owner of the year because I just kept going and I kept having to do things that were outside of my comfort zone, like making cold calls and, uh, you know, calling on businesses and delivering my magazine. I had a parenting magazine. It was a free magazine and, you know, walking into restaurants and preschools and saying, hey, would you take a stack of my magazines? It was uh, definitely an, a time of huge personal growth in my, in my own life. Okay, so happy with this tag that is going to be part of the story that is emerging here. And then I think I want this page to represent routine. So maybe we're going to get some of these things down on the page that represent what happens when I'm really nurturing myself with ritual and routine. Definitely feel like this could use a few little paint brushes in here as well. I don't like that big black one. And I'm kind of thinking um, this one we're going to maybe have it be a little flip up like there's going to be some other things that are going on underneath. And I really want a little bit of this green ribbon in here as well. It's super thick. So let's see if we can push that through there. All right. So allowing opportunity and space for things to unfold and emerge. This definitely needs some more images, so I'm going to have to keep looking for some of these other things. 
I think maybe this dude's going to go over here somewhere. And personally, I am someone that really finds comfort in routine. I love things to be the same, and sometimes I need to shake up that routine. I need to find a different perspective or point of view. I need an adventure, like our big adventure to the Denver Art Museum this last week that was just magical and moving. I don't use a ton of words in my work when I'm doing intuitive collage because sometimes it feel like it feels like you know they can shift or change the meaning but sometimes you find just that one perfect word okay Let's see, what else? It feels like just, I'm loving these little images, but I feel like what's missing here is maybe somebody exercising is part of my almost daily routine as well as uh, some art making. So I might just be on the hunt for little images. Oh, there's a, a nice little apple. This one is a tiny picture. You probably can't even see that of someone in deep rest. And it looks like there's kind of fire about them. But, you know, doing the things that I can to make sure that I get a good night's sleep. That one feels kind of artsy. All right, it just felt like it needed just a few little more things on here that all kind of represent different aspects of that ritual and routine that supports me. And then I think we get very caught up in routines that don't necessarily support us. So I'd love to hear from others. Are you introverted or extroverted? Are you someone that loves ritual and routine or you resist things being the same every day? One of the ways that I overcame my resistance to having things be the same every day was to create a list of activities that all fell into the bucket of my morning routine. And I don't need to do all of them every single morning. But if I just do two or three of them and spend a few minutes every day doing things that nurture me, it gives me a little bit of that flexibility and freedom of choice that I long for. And then I also start my day off on the right foot. The thing that's missing from my routine right now is definitely more time spent writing. I finally feel like I'm getting closer to ideas for writing my next book. And I'm not making the time to write because I've been obsessed with painting. Okay, so if this is ritual and routine, and this is extroversion and introversion, I really feel like I am an ambivert and I love that this says let the journey begin because that journey doesn't mean that it needs to start with me going out and being around a whole bunch of people. In fact, a lot of my personal journey time is spent within or just with my spouse. So I really love it, but I also really love this sort of quiet The quietness of this one like this also feels like comfort here and then this feels like stretching outside of that comfort zone beyond routine beyond 
you know, the, the fear, right, that I have about trying hard things, especially physical things. And uh, this feels like that embracing the new, embracing the journey. So maybe he's going to go on the back side of this tag. He almost feels like he would fit better on a circle. Sylvia says she's introverted. You have few rituals, but you don't like routine. Yeah. And um, for me, a routine is something you do every single day that nourishes or supports you. Like brushing your teeth becomes routine. Drinking a glass of water when you wake up in the morning is a routine. And I think we often think that routine ends up being too much structure and that it's going to constrain our choice and creative freedom. And I found actually in studies have shown that routine can support our creative growth. And any routine can become a ritual. I love this paper, but we'll save that one for another time. Any routine can become ritual by making it sacred. Even washing the dishes can become sacred, depending on our approach. There are some days, especially in the winter when it gets really cold, that I love washing the dishes and having my hands in the hot water feels nourishing and supporting. All right. Um, again, like some of the other pages this week, these are turning out to be multi-layered and a lot of stories unfolding here and interestingly what I'm feeling like is I want to gesso over this one and to push all this back that there's almost too much going on and I really do want this to be the centerpiece and the reminder and then I'm loving the more complex layers that are unfolding over here on this one. And I love this. Today, negative thoughts will not be welcome. And I'm wondering if he's going to just end up being on the back of this one. And they're all going to get kind of attached together. So we have all these like fun layers of story unfolding. And at first I really thought he needed some green on there, but we have enough going on and I'm not thinking so. Do, do, do. Sometimes I think these collages are going to come together fast and easy. And then other times. And actually he needs his own spread because this feels like I'm stepping across that threshold into the new year, into something magical, adventurous. This photograph reminds me of uh, Yellowstone, a lot of the walkways in Yellowstone. I love that Barbara is saying that um, by the definition, she's introverted, but you have high interpersonal intelligence, work with people and love to come home. Yes. So I would say ambiverted, right? Like when you love being with people and connection and then you need that recuperation uh, time on your own, that quiet recuperation time. Okay. So I think I'm going to use some paper tape here. We're going to attach him because he feels like he's like from comfort over here, back over here to discomfort, there's, you know, a lot of stretching that's happening. Again, there's this sort of, you know, mindful, quiet introversion that feels nurturing and supportive. And I'm going to untie this for a second, which I'm probably going to regret because it'll be hard to get back in there. 
and I'm going to get some paint down on this one and push this side back. Yeah, isn't that interesting how we benefit from or uh, enjoy routine more as we get older? And I think also I have less to less to less people to worry about, right? Like it's it's just Brad and I most of the time, and so they're. I'm not worrying about other people's schedules and getting kids to school and being, you know, responsive to other people's needs. And I think there's something healthy about that as well. Okay, this stuff isn't sticking. We're just going to pull that out of there. And so, in fact, we notice when, you know, the, the kids are home, they have very different schedules than we do. So my daughter and her partner are here and they love to stay up late and sleep late. And we go to bed early and we get up early. Okay, I should have put some matte medium down over the top of this and I'm gonna probably do that now. Clean my brayer off. I'm not sure what this page is wanting, but it's wanting something different. And I think when I think about comfort, right, it's not busy and chaotic. There's a lot of things that I do to create these self-care rituals and routines and ways that I seek comfort, but it's quiet and solace. It's not busyness. And so I know what those activities are, and I don't know that I need to show them all here. Let's see if we can stick. I'm just going to carefully roll some matte medium on and create a little more even surface over all of this. We're expecting uh, snowstorms to come through tonight. Not sure how much snow we'll get, but they're going to get a lot up in the mountains so my parents are actually going to come down they live several thousand feet higher than we do here and um, so they're going to come down and stay in a hotel starting tonight so it'll be fun to get some extra time spent with them as well We had originally planned that we would go to their house Christmas Eve and they would come here Christmas Day, but my mom was really worried about the weather. All right, get some water here. And put the water on the wrong side. When you're attaching a tag like this, one of the things that I learned the hard way was to remember to leave a little gap between the two pages so things will fold. If you put them right up next to each other, then things don't fold in as evenly. So just remembering to just leave a little space between the two pages and let the tape fill that space. will create a more even bend. Okay, now when I added that, and you notice I put tape on both sides, now it really feels like maybe it needs just a little bit of paint to kind of marry all that together. <clears throat> and I love that these Im this image is the same color palette as I've been using. This image is, you know, fits in with the palette that I'm already using. This one kind of sort of does. Hmm, I'm wondering if maybe these are going to get 
No, that looks weird with the legs underneath it. So what I love about intuitive collage is you just have to be willing to try things on, right? To really let things sit. So I'm thinking as always about these two prompts of what are the rituals and routines that support me? What are the ones that get me stuck in my comfort zone as opposed to leaning in to a little bit of discomfort so that I have the opportunity for growth. And then I'm thinking about how does my introversion or extroversion support my routines and habits or get in the way of me leaning into some new habits. So getting back to the gym has been a new habit and you know it's it's challenging to get 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 that going again after not having been for a number of years because I know I'm going to be sore, right? And so it means I'm going to have to be uncomfortable for a few days. But once I get going, I remember how much I actually enjoy it. And having a partner in that routine to go to the gym with makes a big difference. It's interesting with the lace on here, it looks like, you know, the, the, there's something that's being revealed. I like how this overlays him. And so there's a sense of something being opened up. So the, the color and the texture and the placement are supporting the, the story of growth here. Just use up a little bit of that paint. Just marry those colors a little bit. And then I'm thinking I'm going to use that blue here to just get some color down on the page, but I need to get this one super, super dry. What creative projects are other people working on? Or I'd love to hear more thoughts on routines, introversion, extroversion, whether you're watching the replay or joining me live, what are your thoughts? Have you created rituals and routines that support your natural style of introversion or extroversion? So I don't know that I did a great job of sticking all of the, the pages down there. Okay, Brayer, where'd you go? There you went. Again, this feels like a softening of all that busyness and that I seek comfort and ritual in silence, right? And in quiet. And I don't need it all to be covered up. I love all that sweet texture there from all of the bits underneath, especially that little doily created some really lovely bits on the page. And bring her back over. Still not quite right. I think what I love is this big image and these two pieces. So this is the introverted part of me. This is the adventurous part of me that seeks discomfort. And this is the part of me over here that loves comfort. And I'm wondering if it just needs to maybe go in the center of the page. Actually, what I think it needs is some of the pink because the, the colors aren't matching because this blue isn't in the image. So visually, it's a little bit jarring. It's not comforting. So uh, let's try getting a little pink down on the page with that blue. And then I think it will feel a little bit better. So this is the alizarin crimson that I have been working with all month.
I can tell already this is going to be better. And I think part of my own creative practice has been to be willing to just keep going, right? When I don't like something, when it's not working and I can't quite figure out ways, sometimes why, sometimes it's important to just take a break and walk away and come back and look at it. And then sometimes, again, it's back to that discomfort of I just need to push through. Like the, the answer is here and I just need to keep going until the, the story emerges, until the story emerges. Okay, yep, even though it has that hole in it, it's gonna go right smack in the center of the page. I'll still put some of that ribbon up there, but I might find a different color ribbon. So all of a sudden that feels better, right? It feels like that pink, the image just works. And yet there's some of that blue, which helps the story continue visually across the page over here. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry. And then I'm going to figure out where this is going to go. I don't know why it doesn't want to be right in the middle. It keeps wanting to be somewhere off to the side. And now I'm noticing this little pop of yellow. Maybe I'm going to bring in a little pop of yellow in here. And I think we resist routine because we think we're going to get bored. Or... We don't want anyone telling us what to do, sometimes even including ourselves. And so having options for things that we do that support us. And if you were, one of the exercises I ask people in my midlife renaissance class to do is they have to do a time audit for two weeks of really looking at how are they spending their time and most of us have way more routines in place than we think we do. We have habits that are deeply ingrained, grooves in our thinking, in our acting, in our being. Sometimes they serve us and sometimes they don't. It has a little bit of a rainbow feel here that's all of a sudden just adding, you know, this little bit more color feels a little bit nourishing. And then we're just going to have that color kind of float across just a little bit to bring that story all together. And I'll probably do some journaling on the back of this tag to remind me what this spread is about. But again, it's another spread where it feels like it's exploring so many different aspects of self. The introverted, the adventurous, and the let's get uncomfortable. And then that part of me that seeks comfort and solace in self-care and nurturing. Oh, Kim, that's awesome. Are you doing it on your own or do you have some other friends you're doing it with? It's such a fun project to uh, to just do on, on your own as well as with others. Kim said she's working on our Sisterhood of the Traveling Journal project. All right, I think this is complete for now. 
it doesn't feel quite complete, but it feels like it needs to sit. All these things need to marry a little bit. And I still, this guy somehow needs to get incorporated. Maybe he's going to get tucked into here. Okay, food for thought. What if I make this small? I struggle with leaving things unfinished. I really love a good finished project. So for me, it can be hard to pause and walk away from a project that I've started. because I get satisfaction from finishing, but also because I usually have three other projects in my head that I want to get on with. Like I'm loving this elephant that I'm painting and I have a vision in my head already for the next painting. And so then I tend to get in a rush and when I get in a rush, I don't take time to let the story unfold and tell itself. And I find that the stories are more powerful and impactful when we allow the stories to unfold and don't rush them or force them. And Kim, I just uh, got some new alcohol inks. Michael's had them on sale. I got some for me and for my mom for Christmas, some fun new colors. And I've been wanting to play some more with the technique that I shared in the sisterhood as well. Okay. All right, so here we go. Maybe this is finally that story that's emerging with some of these different pieces coming together because this really is a journey, right? Self-care rituals and routines are such a journey. And yet this one also feels like from a color perspective, it matches this spread over here. Hmm. Okay, I think it's going to live here on this one. So it's been a productive couple of days. Yes, it can be tricky, can't it, Sylvia? So yesterday we looked at self-love and painting a self-portrait and anytime we embark on a journey as we step into the new year of doing better oh that's awesome so fun Barbara I love that yay can't wait to see pictures of, of what you guys create so what I love about this is so yesterday we talked about self-acceptance and self-love, which is definitely a journey. And then today we really continue that conversation with this idea of what are the, the rituals and routines that bring me comfort. And am I introverted or extroverted? And do the rituals that I have in place to nourish and comfort me support that aspect of me, and in my case, I'm both introverted and extroverted, right? I'm ambiverted. I have the, I'm comfortable in both places. And then what do I need to do to stretch out of my comfort zone? So again, so appreciating personally my own journey through these prompts because I feel like this rich, deep self-reflection is really supporting me to create a more inspired and different 
vision for what I want for next year. This one's so pretty. It's going to get tucked in there somewhere. All right, so a few things to finish up and let dry, but I'm feeling complete for now. Thank you guys for sticking with me. We went a little bit long today, and I will be back the Tuesday after Christmas. I'm off to get my house cleaned up and do some cooking and package wrapping and get ready for the uh, fun times with family over the next couple of days. So grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you, as always, for being here live. Thank you for watching the replay. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live, and I will see you guys all in a couple of days. Thank you, Blanca. Same to you, my friend. Bye-bye, everybody.